go ahead and introduce yourself. Let us know who you are. My name is Cole Dixon. Uh, I train out of Rice Bros Reading. Uh, up here with all you guys. Uh, I'm originally from Oregon. I moved down here after I turned 18 to kind of get a different set and setting, you know. Uh, I trained with uh, Sam Sleezer, was my first MMA coach. And how old were you then? That, I was probably 19 then. So originally I had trained with a team up in Oregon uh, called Dog Pound MMA when I was in high school. And I trained with them for a couple of years and then didn't get real serious with it until I'd moved down here and uh, met Sam. I started doing amateur fights, uh, had like four or five amateur fights and then moved to Chico and I trained with uh, standalone MMA over there for a few years. And how old were you when you moved? moved when I there? moved to Chico, I was probably like 22. So I probably did those, I mean, I want to say like Four, I want to say like five AME fights with Sam mm -hmm. and a team intense and a, a bunch of local guys out of like Tama County and stuff uh, from like 19 to like 22. And then from then I, I moved down to Chico and started training with uh, Kiba and, and all those guys uh, down there. And then I probably mo moved back up to uh, the Red Bluff Redding area. When I was about 26, 27, and started getting heavy into jujitsu, the gi jujitsu. Uh, once they opened up the Red Bluff branch of the uh, gym, I started going there every day and started becoming a staple there. And then <clears throat> kind of been trying to get MMA going and uh, striking going in, at Rice Bros. And finally, with a, we got a, some guys coming along that help you know push that like daniel with the boxing and shasta boxing you with the mma striking so now you know we, we got an mma program going on now so i'm pretty stoked about that so that's been a big uh big plus for me personally as mm -hmm. far as training there so it's it's pretty cool yeah that's been fun yeah um, and then talk about your your kickboxing class how's that going so yeah that, so i do that in the mornings at eight on tuesdays and thursdays uh it's pretty good. Like uh, we have between five to nine guys that come through. Uh, we have we have some new guys that are just getting into it that want to eventually fight, you know. But right now they're kind of taking it taking it slow. And we have guys in there that have already been through it, fought, got the T-shirt, the whole nine yards, and they they just want to train, get better, and, and have mm -hmm. fun. So it's cool because we can we have some guys that are there to ego free, just want to have fun. So they'll train the guys that are still up and coming that want that are really hungry you know right. for me it's great because they're always down to train with me i got mm -hmm. the the young lions that want to get after it and then i have the older guys that are kind of there to have fun and and uh you know show me some tips and tricks there mm -hmm. so it's been pretty good pretty good and i'm new i'm pretty new at coaching like uh i never wanted to get into coaching until like i was confident in what i was coaching right and so uh right. i took the time and really i think figured out my my style and everything and then I, i'm starting to coach now so mm -hmm. I, I feel like i'm knowledgeable enough to do it now yeah no it's it's cool i mean you i see you working with the guys you're you're doing some cone drills bag work um some footwork drills so it's cool that you're you're able to dip into those those yeah. different techniques you know yeah. where normally you wouldn't even think about that even doing it yourself but yeah. now that you're coaching you're like oh i can you know, work on this pivot here or this shuffle here with, with the footwork and I can work, you know, the bag this way and, and the, the mitts and the, the mm -hmm. cone drills, all that kind of stuff, all kind of, you know, helps you out when, when you're showing the, the different footwork. It makes me understand that in my own training, my day-to-day -day trainings, you know, I, uh, you're not going to conquer everything in one day. And so like when a new, when somebody comes in and they want to train, it's that same thing. Like they're, they're a big slab of marble. Right. And I, I can't with one stroke and one practice create this masterpiece, right? It mm -hmm. takes time. It's a little bit over here, a little bit over here, a little bit over here. And eventually you step back after, you know, a couple months, three, four, five, six months. And now you have a work of art. You're working with something, you're molding, you're starting to see the, the, the sculpture take shape to what it is, you know? Nice. So to me, it's helped me in my trainings. Like, okay, today we're going to conquer this. We're going to work on this, this, and this. And we're not going to worry about everything else because we can't do it all in one mm -hmm. day. And it's really, it's actually helped me put in the reps on things that I've needed to rep instead of just doing all these different things. I'm really focusing and then tailoring it to my game and my style. 
So yeah. it, it's it's become nice. It's, I, I like it a lot. I, I've noticed that with my teaching that I've learned how to almost create a structure where you can start with something and then build off it and branch off it and connect everything mm-hmm. back to that one point. What is, um, for kickboxing, what is like your, your leaping off point? What do you start your slab? What's your first technique that you, you show? Or is it footwork? Or, or what do you show first as you're building? Yeah, I'd say the first thing, like, aside from like a stance, right? Everyone's got a, a kind of their own thing with a stance. It's going to be footwork. Like your legs have to be lively enough to move, right? So in kickboxing, a lot of it, like, you got to have your you got to be able to kick more than once or twice or three times, right? So a lot of it is just dexterity in the legs and conditioning of the legs through jump rope. Uh, I'm big into movement patterns, like uh, having different movement patterns where like you have uh, your go-tos, right? You're always going to change it up, but I would say probably footwork and hand placement, where you're going to place your hand. And everyone's a little different, right? So where I put my hands may not be where you put yours, Mm -hmm. right? But we, we need to have an understanding of where they should be in your training. So when I see that changing, I can correct it. Right. I can I can remind you. Building a home base. Yeah, yeah. We have to have a home yeah, we have to have a home base. And I think that home base, that f- foundation uh is is footwork, lay conditioning, and proper hand placement. And those are when you're tired, when I want I want you to be able to do these foot patterns and have your hands where they should be. When you're dead dog tired and you got nothing else going on, you still will have that ready for it. Yeah, I think that's super important. Just being able to like recognize where you are in any point of the fight or any point of sparring, knowing, hey, I can just get take a step back, get back into my home base and, and reset almost. Yeah. Help, that helps you, you know, plan out your next combination, your next footwork, your next feint, whatever it is. I think that's really important. I think it helps you not get lost in the fray. Uh, a lot of sometimes a lot of a lot of times fighting can turn kind of hectic right depending on who you're fighting what mindset there and you're in your game plan uh it's good to have something that kind of keeps you rooted and and okay i i go back to this this is my home base this is you know i think it's important to to build that foundation that structure first and then we can get on to the fancier things the question mark kicks the spinning back fist all these other cool stuff that everyone wants to do right we can get to that we just got to work on this this stuff first right yeah no that's important um yeah i found that you know being able to to build off that home base is super important um but i think one thing that you said that i wanted to get your view on was the the overwhelming you said overwhelming so i want to talk about kind of how we've been training recently um just to try to to overwhelm that that computer uh, of Mm -hmm. our opponent um just to kind of give them so many different looks that they get overwhelmed and you can take advantage of that so kind of talk about what we've been doing to to prepare for for your fight right now yeah um just setting things up that look the same but can can like you kind of touched on earlier uh having a couple things that branch out into so many other things, right? Like we may have a jab, right? But this jab is a setup for three, four other things, depending on how I throw this jab, right? Mm-hmm. Having the ability to to jump from one thing to the other and them not knowing it's like, it's having the knee chambered the same way. It's, it's having like a step in jab, but having four or five answers to after that jab, right? right. It's, it's playing with things that like making them guess right like there, there's only so many ways you can block there's only so many guesses that you have right so if i throw my jab and behind that depending on what you do i have four or five different answers it's gonna be really hard for you to pick which one is going to be the right one you're right. just you're basically playing the slots and i'm the house in that situation i, I it favors me in that situation mm-hmm. so and uh mixed with like being able to stay on the gas pedal and pace people with with that so they're on the defense, having to play a guessing game and have and paying for not guessing right. Uh, I think that becomes overwhelming to people. And yeah. I think what we're doing, changing levels, and this is only you know we're touching on the striking. We're not even touching when you add the grappling, mm-hmm. you add the takedowns. How many more answers and problems become uh, prevalent? But it's just the over, overwhelming people to 
starting the same the strike combination and branching it in six seven different ways is what I, especially in the sparring that i've been doing for this camp uh that's been the main difference i've seen is i've always been pretty good on on pacing people out but uh making them guess as they're getting tired making them just have to constantly question what i'm doing while being able to stay calm and not use any of my own energy has been mm. pretty there's been a, i don't want to give away too much but there's been a couple of good really solid things i've been been working in camp and i think how we've been training are is what's opening those up for me on my striking so pretty excited to to play with them in this fight yeah no, i'm excited it's gonna be fun um touch on touch on the fight coming up where, where is it at what have you been doing to train so uh, this this next fight will be may 27th it's for uh, a1 it's a uh, uriah favors promotion out of, out of sack so uh this one will be at the hard rock in wheatland it's like right above sacramento but uh it'll be on the fight pass and, and uh stuff uh I'm fighting a guy out of San Diego. His name's Britt Lip Lippington. Lippington. Uh, looks like a boxer, brawler kind of guy. Um, feel pretty good about the fight. Uh, feel pretty confident about it. We I've been doing man a lot more training, a lot like more structured training. I've always trained a lot, but it's just kind of been go 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 with no like structure or goal set up right mm -hmm. so uh, i got with a uh, north state crossfit uh our buddy marshall from the gym he's been uh we've been training over there with him and uh so i've been doing that twice a week that's helped a lot with with john john with, jorgensen yeah john there. jorgensen over there at mm -hmm. uh, north state yeah he's got a uh, oh three to four of our uh us jujitsu guys are over there doing a, a class twice a week with him and that's been, I think, I think everyone else has felt too in my grappling that uh, my strength has just jumped in, in levels. Uh, I can, you know, wrestle with the big guys with with people fifty pounds on me, and uh, I feel great. Uh, I, I, I'm big into swimming. I, I think the pool is a underutilized tool in in any athletic endeavor, really. Mm -hmm. But especially for what we do, it's just the ability, to, like, sit there in a kicking position and stretch my hip out and stretch my leg out without having to worry about the balance of my body because the buoyancy of the water is going to take care of that for me. So it's a, it gives me the ability to really work that, the, the movement, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same movement pattern in the water, but it's, it's easier for me to do it. So right. I, it helps me develop my kick, my kicks a lot. I think, uh, then we, you, I mean, a lot of it is you and you and me by ourselves, right? We're doing an hour of minutes. We're going over the same two, three, couple things, and we're just nailing it and just making it, trying to make it as perfect as possible. And then, of course, like being out of Rice Bros, uh, it's just the level of grappling I get is is pretty confident boosting, right? Mm -hmm. like it, it's pretty good knowing that I'm rolling with like a European champ, or this champ, this dude that won this, like it's. Mm -hmm. It's pretty nice to know, like, well, this guy probably doesn't have this in his gym, you know. So yeah. that, that's a good feeling. Well, yeah, I mean, even us being in a little town in Reading, you know, I took a video the other day and we had 15 purple, yeah. brown, and black belts all on the mat at the same time in a nogi practice. Competing. Competing. Not against, just yeah. purple. Like, these are guys that are actively on the circuit right. winning. Right. right. And now. there was five of each. I think it was yeah. five purples, five browns, and five blacks. And all of us were just literally ripping each other's heads yeah, off in the nicest like, way. <laughs> you can't get that. I mean, almost anywhere, let alone Little Oil, Redding, California. Yeah. You know, it's pretty cool that we have that here um, with such high level talent, with such high level minds, um, whether it be boxing, kickboxing, MMA, wrestling, jujitsu. We have it all. Um, we're we're set up for the future. I think uh, we just drove by the new gym today. Yeah, it's gonna and, be. That's Man, gonna be sick. we're so excited. We're going to have so many different avenues, whether it be weightlifting, like I said, um, the boxing, kickboxing, MMA, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, we'll have it all. Um, we'll be able to train, you know, kids from the ground up, start off their careers and, and get them Multiple going. Multiple classes going at one time. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was the first time I got to go in there today, too. And I was pretty blown away by how big, like, I knew it was big, right? Mm -hmm. You see the videos and stuff, but it doesn't. I really do it justice till you go there and like see it and walk around. This is like the biggest gym I've ever been in is going to be that gym. Like, yeah. I mean, that's going to have everything too. That's going to, I mean, it's definitely going to put everyone else on notice, you know, that's going to be, 
That's going to be sick. That's going to be a world class gym right there. Yeah, that's just a month away or, or roughly, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, right after. I think June. that's why, because I'm so focused on this fight. I'm not yeah. even, you know, thinking about that yet. But, yeah, so, so it'll be my fight and then right into the new gym. Right into it. Yeah. yeah and we're so going to have next training camp will be in the new gym. <laughs> yeah. New partners, new gym, yeah. new classes. We're going to have a lot more classes, um, some evening classes. We haven't finalized everything yet, but yeah, that's we're going to have a lot nice. more classes for everybody. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have more, more bodies for us to throw around. It's going to be great. Yeah. I'll be able to have a more, oh, well, it's tough, you know, to have, you know, some people work shifts. So it'll be nice. We'll be able to hit either, either group, the night group or right. the day group. Right. So that'll be, and for me, I'll just flip flop back and forth. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. And we'll have a shower. So yeah. those who do need to go to work can, can bounce out quick and yeah, it's going to be just very convenient right downtown. I mean, even now that's 6 a.m. class because we come in for seven and sometimes I'm early. Most of the time I'm late, but uh, uh, there'll be like 30 people in there. Like, like the mirrors are all yeah, the windows are all fogged up. There's like, 35 man. guys last week. Yeah. At 6 a.m. So, yeah, yeah, that's impressive. And just getting it too, yeah. like, like no slouches either. Those no. are all guys that are coming. You coming at, if you're coming to Gi Jiu Jitsu at 6 a.m. in the morning yeah. <laughs> on a work day, yeah. you're, you're dedicated, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, I need to get in more for Gee, but man, I'll, I'll tell you, it's hard to get up. Yeah. Really. Well, yeah, I mean, that's like we my have, quiet time. I mean, we, yeah, we, we train a lot, but, you know, those uh, guys, some of those guys are waking up at, and transferring from Red Bluff, you know, coming all the way from Red Bluff to, to get a 6 a.m. class. Yeah. And it's like, that's some dedication. Like what time are you getting up? Yeah. Man? Yeah. We got what some, are you drinking? Or what kind of coffee you got? Get some strong, coffee. right? Yeah. So, yeah, up my Folgers or something. Yeah, yeah, and we'll be right next to Dutch Bros, so we'll have coffee. Yeah, that'll be nice. We'll, we'll be right there. That'll be fun. Yeah, that's literally like across the street. Yeah, yeah, so it'll be great. You said you know you change your schedule a little bit, kind of a little more consistent, a little more plan. Um, this has been kind of a seven month training camp for you, <laughs> just because we we kind of started the program about eight nine months ago, um, doing some night classes. We kind of went away from those just because of um, timing, wrestling season, and all that. Um, but again, we'll bring those back. We'll bring some night MMA classes back. Uh, we'll have more bodies. But talk about how you know you started this training camp, how you started coming down to Reading, getting more consistent, yeah, all that, and and your your pro debut as well. So yeah, that's all been in the last yeah. what, seven months. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I lived in Red Bluff. So before that, I lived in Gerber, and you know, for people that don't know, that's like. 40 miles from Reading. So I was doing that every day, driving from like Gerber to Reading every day to mm -hmm. train and then working and, you know, being a dad and a husband, like all that kind of stuff. Right. And so, uh, we ended up just buying a place in Anderson, which is like only 10 miles from Reading. So that once I did that, it was, it was a game changer. Yeah. Like, it, it was all, it was all over. Uh, yeah, we did. We started doing evening classes, but you know, you talked about wrestling and then for me, like I'm a big sap, like, I, I just want to be around my family like all the time. Mm -hmm. I just want to be around my kids and just chill. And, yeah. and like I made my backyard a big old playground, basically <laughs> like, like a, having kids is like an excuse for me to just be a big kid. Again, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, we started doing all the morning stuff. So basically, you know, I drop my kids off at school. I do all that. And then I get to do all my training. I take care of all that. I go do my work. I do that. And then I pick them up and bam, 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 Monday through Friday good clean schedule for me right it's, it's pretty nice at first it was pretty rough doing the driving every day that that was starting to get to me because i would i would still train for like three hours because mm. you know i'm not gonna waste it so right. i would i would do all my training then on the way back i would stop at the pool you know i would get it make sure i get it in uh but so i watched your you train with for longo or uh, train longo for his first mm -hmm. fight right mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the time frame, like I just couldn't be there at that time when I was living in Red Bluff. But I got to kind of see the glimpses of uh, your guys' training camp and kind of the stuff you were having him do, and it was pretty. It was really cool. And so when I moved up to Anderson, uh, I think that's when we started working more and we got ready for that pro, my pro debut, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that was like a three month camp too. Yeah, it was a good yeah. build up to that one. Yeah, and that. So yeah, we did we did that fight. That fight was pretty anticlimactic. It kind of went kind of quick. So talk, yeah, tell us about tell us about that night making your pro debut. 
what was going through your head beforehand? Um, I couldn't make it till the last minute, so that was <laughs> oh, a crazy man, that, story in itself. Yeah, <laughs> that whole thing. So, so yeah, just touch on what, yeah, so, like getting ready for the fight, and then like, yeah, all all. Okay, going so through I, I hadn't fought. I've been doing jujitsu tournaments and stuff, right? But I hadn't fought MMA for like two years, maybe a little more, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so not that I was rusty, but you just want everything to be like nipped and tucked, right? Especially when you haven't fought so for a minute. We had some technical difficulties. <laughs> unfortunately missed half the podcast so you guys missed out on some great content that you'll never see um but let's pay extra time. we'll find it daniel got to got to see it he was the only one yeah so he'll, he'll be able to cherish that forever <laughs> but anyway um so where we left off was your first pro fight we were working up building up to it um talk about the camp and the build up um to that fight uh, it was a long camp, you know. Uh, yeah, it was like three, maybe three and a half months for that camp, for that fight camp. Uh, like I said, it was it was my first fight in a couple years. Uh, I had a cornerman kind of flake out on me, uh, so I had to call a couple of you guys to try to come down. You're in the middle of a wrestling tournament. I think it was the first one you'd ever put on up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, same day, you wrap that up. I hauled down to uh, three hours down to uh, the Ukiah area. And, uh, yeah, it, it was cool. I called Daniel that morning, uh, Saturday, and I was like, hey, man, uh, I don't have a corner right now. Like, uh, my guy's flaked on me. I, can you come down here? Daniel called you, and the next thing I know, you guys are both showing up. <laughs> so I went from having, like, no corner, not knowing what I'm doing, to uh, you guys being right there for me. And then uh, after the fight, I got to like see everybody that had gone there. There was like 20 people. Yeah. Like that was one of the coolest pictures I have is everybody uh, taking that picture together after the fight. So yeah, we were all packed in there. Yeah. Like some sardines. Yeah. <laughs> no, that road to get, to get there was, a uh, was pretty rough. Like you, you came in, like you had been through some things, man. Oh man. Yeah. The, the drive there was so intense because I had just finished. So I'm trying to wrap things up. And like I said, this was the first Mind you, three hours, three hour difference. Yeah, This was the first year I had taken over the East side wrestling club. And so I'm running this by myself for the first time. Yeah. This, this tournament that we put on annually. Um, and I'm running this tournament, trying to get everything, you know, all the staff bar money counted, everything, you know, situated, give everyone leftovers, you know, yeah. roll up mats, Say put them away. Buys. Yeah. So getting all that done. Um, and we had a delay in the tournament because, again, this was the first first one I did. So we were using uh, track wrestling for the first time. Had a delay because we were trying to get that set up. So everything that could go wrong did. Um, but <laughs> I, I was able to bolt out of there. I think it was like 5 o'clock. Yeah. And you were supposed to fight at 7.30 or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And they, they kept pushing it back. So it kept working out where they were like, oh, we got to push it back yeah. for a little longer. But I was bolting down there. My phone was dying. So, like, I was at 20% when I started the road trip. I didn't have a phone cord. And I always have a phone cord in my car. Until when you need one. That's the way exactly. it works all the time. Right? Yeah. So, I'm bolting down there um, trying to get directions to this place. And this place doesn't exist on Google Maps. Like, it you doesn't. can't find it. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm searching for this place. And I'm going through these windy roads on the coast. And pouring I, down rain pouring down rain the, dark the, the roads flooded you my wife said yeah, all she could see, see was mud well because it had snowed you know more more than often mm -hmm. this winter so yeah. it there was snow and and debris and, yeah, on the that, road yeah and so you couldn't see the line yeah stood. she said she couldn't see like where the edge of the road was mm -hmm. to where the road was yeah and then um the trees you know were hanging over and there was broken trees so it was a mess yeah the sign to get into the casino was like this old like haunted sign that looked like you know from a horror movie that you don't turn here because you're gonna get murdered but I, i'm like okay it's got to be down this road because yeah. it's the only thing that yeah. has the name of the casino on there because yeah. now it's 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 no longer a casino it's just like yeah this defunct building yeah they like shut the casino down but luckily the promoter managed to still like open up the uh, gymnasium aspect of it. So he could still like run fights out of there and everything. Yeah. But the casino shut down. So it was cool. He could wiggle in, like do that, you know, yeah. to where we had still had the event and everything. But yeah, 
that road <laughs> it was rough which i don't understand maybe it's because i came in from a different town like i came in from the town we did weigh-ins mm -hmm. and then crossed over i never went on that road really that, yeah i know I, I, like everyone was saying that. that i was like i, I had a great time driving down. <laughs> like, it was sunshine yeah. it was nice like so yeah, yeah but on the way back i experienced that road and yeah i was like man what the, what yeah. the heck so i pull up and i'm finally there and um i get there and you're literally just being called out <laughs> yeah. like i get there and your your wife tells me where you are so i can go and mm -hmm. say hi and as i'm i'm getting there you're almost you know ready to make your walk yeah. out and so it was kind of cool to just to like you know make eye contact yeah. for a sec say hey how's it yeah. going you know it was because i was like all right I, I'll, I was like, you're going to be in the corner. Okay, I got you, Daniel, Nick. I'm good. I, yeah. like, I know who's my corner. I, 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 I could hear you guys right away. As soon as I got in there, uh, everything was calm. felt good. But, uh, yeah, watching you walk through that door just. <laughs> <laughs> <Let me in. laughs> like, it was it was it was pretty it almost like i think it helped because it gave me a little chuckle yeah. like a little, uh, oh, okay this yeah. is kind of like this is gonna yeah. be a fun time yeah. like yeah. it kind of took that like cut that tension a little bit you know because like uh in the back room it was uh me and the dude were looking at each other yeah it was like, a funky back room yeah and so like me being who i am i'm gonna glare at you like i'm just gonna stare at you then so i'm like <laughs> staring at you or staring at him and he's looking at me and i'm looking at him and i'm trying to like warm up and i just i catch myself just still like mad dogging him the whole time so and he, t he turned out to be a cool guy like we yeah, talked afterwards yeah, yeah. and stuff super cool but, but like in that chip, yeah. yeah in that time it's like bro i'm gonna hurt you pretty soon yeah. like in about five minutes i'm gonna try to put my fist through your face oh, yeah. like but uh yeah so we started doing the walkout uh we started walking out and the song i picked like was just a good song for that crowd i guess they loved it like as soon as that song played uh mm -hmm. i had the crowd on my side right oh, yeah. it, it was it was cool and uh so we went in i went in the cage uh ran around it and uh they said go and me and the guy came came towards each other and i was kind of giving him some hand feints and don't he had uh he, he looked like he was gonna he was ready for the a bottom attack a low attack and it looked like he had his hands up you know as like a boxer he's ready to take that headshot but i could tell that this was open on his body mm -hmm. So that's what I snapped that kick, hit him in the body, and he ended up falling. And I just jumped on him and started throwing the elbows. And uh, that was pretty much how that fight ended. It was it was about twenty seconds. I threw, I did throw like twelve elbows. Oh yeah, they did let me throw. I was sitting there like, man, okay, like, I'll just keep doing it. But yeah, I think the official time was under 12, 12 seconds. Was it? And I think you had about twelve elbows. Yeah, so yeah, one, one per second. <laughs> yeah, uh, so. that was a good time. You know, it's funny though. It's like. We hadn't planned to throw that kick like at all. Mm -hmm. Like we hadn't planned on that. Mm -hmm. Like I had a foot injury, so I couldn't even like throw. I wasn't even throwing kicks really, mm -hmm. right? And even in the warm up to to that fight, we were just doing boxing. I I had told Daniel like, hey man, don't even bring the kick pads. Yeah. We're not even gonna kick. Like I'm just gonna box this dude, and that's gonna work. And uh, the first thing I did was throw a kick. <laughs> the first thing I threw kicks and elbows. I didn't even throw a punch. Yeah. So it was it was kind of funny afterwards. Yeah, but. well, it was like you said, he gave you that opening. He yeah. kind of lifted up for mm -hmm. his own cheap kick. Yeah, um, and that off balanced him and gave you that opening. And yeah, from there it was just over. Yeah, um, it was. It's hard to recover with someone with your length and your size on top of you, mm -hmm. um, especially when they're shorter. Mm -hmm. They don't have that leverage to to even get up. We yeah. saw that with um, Aljamain and um, yeah, very Segudo. similar. Where once Aljamain got on top of most 135 pounders because he's so long, mm -hmm. once he gets on top, it's almost impossible to get him off your back. Well, um, my, my, uh, oh man, what are they? Not, not a bad balance point, but my, uh, I can like stretch you out more and I'm still, right. I'm still in my base mm -hmm. and now you're stretched out of where you should be. So right. I can, I can, and I still have leverage where I can hit, I can do stuff and funkier positions right because i'm i'm tall lanky skinny so right. it, it, it yeah it's, it's pretty advantageous in those situations yeah i mean you you asked me i think yesterday what how far do you i think you could take this right and yeah i kind of wanted to say my response for this but um <laughs> so i know you looked at me like <laughs> <laughs> so well i said you know yeah you yeah, should know yeah. um how far i think you can take this but one of the things that I, I wanted to touch on was the first part was cardio. I mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. because of your cardio 
um, you have an unfair advantage to to most matchups. So I had a partner in, in high school. He was about 6'4", just a long kid, um, similar body style to you. Long, lanky. And he could run a sub five minute mile, you know, in high school. I mean, just a freak. Yeah. And, and yeah. could do it breathing through his nose. Like, just, yeah, that's why you I should mean, do it. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, he's like a gazelle. Developing that power. Yeah. So that, I think, is such a secret power. Um, and it's not, you know, secret, but it's just such a power. It's to hard have. to earn that power, though. Like, yeah. you got to work for that power. Well, and even some people I don't even think can achieve that, right? Yeah. So um, I trained with Munoz when I was um, training for MMA, and he got his heart rate down to below 30s at some points in the training camp, which was – During was, practice? No, no, resting. Oh. So oh, his, his resting got, got below 30. So yeah. He got to a place where, you know, he could just go for miles mm. and days and just not get tired. And you're on, on that same level where you're hitting, you know, you're hitting that 30 mm. range with your heart rate, your yeah. heart rate right now, peaking perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that alone is, is one of the biggest tools in MMA. You know, mm -hmm. Joe Rogan was talking about like how um, Chael was saying, 25 minutes sh it should be illegal you know, for a fight because it's so long yeah. and you can't, you know. Yeah, it's hard to fight for that long. Yeah, you can't get your full um, power and athleticism throughout the whole yeah. duration yeah, it's of gonna that dissipate. fight. Um, that's why you see boxers so defensive nowadays and, you know, why Floyd was so good because he could move and defend and, yeah. and just ride his bike for those, you know, 20 – minutes or however yeah. long those fights are and not be tired right. just as good in the first round as it was the 12. right so that and then um and then i touched on it briefly but the the length factor um you're so long for a 170 pounder um there there is others that have similar length mm -hmm. as you but on top of your cardio and your length i think those two advantages are, are huge yeah you know, we talked about you know john jones's reach and how mm -hmm. he's able to just frame guys out and and jab whenever yeah and, and get through those those shields and, and penetrate whenever he wants um, again another you know, huge advantage mm -hmm. to, to your your attributes yeah and, and your fighting style and then um on top of that you know I, I think you know call it what you want but just the pieces that are coming together at, at the time it's coming together is, is not by accident you know yeah. i think having such high level um training minds um whether mm -hmm. it be you know jorgensen at, at north state or tanner at rice bros or daniel or you know we have multiple black you. belts me you know others i'll say it your, he won't <laughs> your determination your you know your work yeah. like all those things on top of it i really think we can take this yeah. to wherever we want it because of that um, everything is just kind of lined out perfectly for for the future for our gym, mm -hmm. but uh, as well as a fight team yeah. um, and and those tools that you need to to achieve you know that level yeah, of, of success. professionalism and, yeah. and success. Yeah, uh, that cardio stuff. I think for me, uh, I always knew like in the back of my mind, like because <clears throat> the majority of my my. My training is like has been by myself or, you know, I live in them one town. I work in another town. I train in another town. So a lot of the stuff has been by myself. And I always knew like, okay, I can't, I don't know what I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, but I know that if I'm in better shape than you, I can recover better. I can take a better shot. I can fight for longer. Yeah. And I know that's scary. And I know that scares people. So if I can at least work on my cardio by myself, if I can at least work on my breath work, uh, staying calm. If I can at least work on that stuff, then I'll at least have a cardio advantage against people. And so, even as a kid, like I would, like you were saying, that one kid in high school, I would run miles mm -hmm. in high school just for that one thing, just so I could right. beat those wrestlers that I, I got to fight and all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff, you know. So, cardio. I've always tried to be big on cardio. Everything from like my VO two max to to everything. I, that's like. Yeah, it's been a big, big part of it. My whole life has always been cardio. Like I, like I couldn't run under a five, but I could do a five flat pretty, pretty consistently in high school. You know, yeah. on mile times and stuff. But uh, and swimming, I'm, I'm big into swimming and stuff. But I think uh, 
uh, I think for myself, uh, luckily and through through some like effort, uh, I've surrounded myself with like a good, like you were saying, like a, a hive of of uh, knowledge, you know, like, mm-hmm. and they're all a little different. Tanner, you, Daniel, like all these people have different niches, right? And so for me, I don't have to sit here and be like, I got to know everything. I can just kind of delegate it, you know, like, okay, mm-hmm. you're going to take care of what I need to do, do in wrestling. You're going to see what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing right, what I need to work on. He's going to see my, my hands. He's going to see my jujitsu. It's, it's nice. Cause I don't have to like try to do it all myself or anything, you know? Yeah. Uh, like when I lived in Red Bluff, I had a, you know, I didn't get a touch on this, but I had a good group of guys that like I took. So I took my last amateur fight. I'd had no team. It mm-hmm. was just me uh, my, my buddy CJ, my buddy, uh, Costa and a good friend, Steve Harris, who just like would come to my house every day. Let me work on them, hold mitts for me, run with me, just do all sit in the car and drive as I'm running. Like, uh, I had a good group of just friends that just, it was basically, Hey guys, like I have to fight and mm-hmm. I don't have, I don't have anyone yeah. and I can't get up here every day. Uh, so I would do my jujitsu at the red bluff gym and then those guys would just do mitts with me. And, and it was really cool. I, I'm really uh, thankful to have those guys for that last amateur fight fight down there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, after that, I, you know, we, and I had talked to Steve too, and he's like, no, you need to go there. What mm-hmm. we need to do, whatever we need to do to get you up to Reading. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we did, you know? And so, and now I feel like, uh, man, I don't know how you're going to beat me. Like <laughs> it's, it, you know, it, it's a cocky thing to say, whatever, but I, and I'm not trying to say from a cocky point, I'm trying to say that I've really sat down and tried to find my weaknesses and not run from them. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I've came to you and be like, this is what I think I need to work on. This is how I would beat me. Let's work on these things. Right. And we've worked on them. You know, I, I think I've earned the right to like be confident. I don't want to be cocky, but mm-hmm. I want to, I want to be confident, you know? Yeah. And I think that mindset is earned. I mm-hmm. think that's another thing um, that I wanted to touch on is, the talented kids that come to me that I coach, I, I almost cringe when I have to coach these kids because I know their potential and I know they won't reach it, right? Most of the time. Yeah. There are exceptions. Yeah. I, I will say that. Um, but most of the time, the, the kids who are talented who come in, they're, they, once it gets hard, they, they fall apart. Why do you think can't. that is? Do you think it's because they're used to things being like easier for them or yeah, they're just yeah. kind of used to being able to finesse it. Yeah. And I think there's for, for wrestling, especially there's always someone better than you. There's oh, always yeah. someone who can beat you yeah. most of the time. Um, there again, more exceptions, but yeah. most of the time there's always someone who can beat you mm. and mentally being able to take that loss and recover from it and get better from it is, is a hard mental gymnastics to mm-hmm. do as a young kid um who's confident and and has skills right and the stubbornness too from from talented kids can get in the way where they think they know best because they've done it this way for Mm -hmm. so long and And it works this way yeah Yeah. but when you reach a higher level those same moves don't work those same techniques won't work Mm -hmm. and that's why i you know the i teach a certain way where it's multiple um techniques all at once i I like to kind of blanket and give you every option um, because what will happen is those those talented kids let's say they have a blast double and not to say you can't just be successful with a blast double because jordan burroughs Mm. has done that right he basically has a blast yeah blast double is way to victory 200 victories (laughs) but let's say one kid you know comes to me and all he has is a blast double Mm -hmm. and he can't achieve that on the best guys well then what does he do you know he yeah. falls apart he can't create from there he can't learn from there yeah um, so that i think that gets in the way as well um but you have that built mindset because of all the things that you've put in all the the techniques you've learned all mm-hmm. the all the different um coaches you've come to and and let you know kind of help you out and, yeah. and learn um, all those different techniques and you have that same mentality with your cardio and your your preparedness yeah um to to just push yourself to a level that is really hard to to take that from you right you said you know you can't find ways that people can beat you because of what you've earned right because Mm of the the time you've put in and you know the game you know the 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 ways to to your weaknesses and and you know how to defend those and Mm -hmm. you know how to 
overcome those, even if you do, you know, succumb to a weakness here. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that's so important just to have that mentality yeah. of, of overcoming and, and, you know, taking on each challenge as it comes. Well, like I, I fought in an MMA fight, right? And I got my arm dislocated in a, in a jujitsu hold, right? By uh, a guy at Orion Cusco or Cusco or something. He's in the UFC now, right? But uh, that was before I did any jujitsu. I was just doing out, going out there doing MMA <laughs> fights, right? And uh, it was in that fight. I was like, I got to learn jujitsu now, yeah. you know? <laughs> And uh, GSP said something, uh, man, what was it? It was something like, uh, learn everything, like be open to learning everything, but have the wherewithal to like dis discard the stuff that's not effective for you. Yeah. And uh, our coach, Sam, my old coach, Sam, would like ingrain that into us. Like, you know, some coaches aren't cool with you, like cross training. Like they, they want you to be. Right. Yeah. yeah, he was never like that. He was like, no, leave, go do some stuff mm -hmm. and come back, bring it back. We'll, we'll dissect it. We'll check it out. And so that the the openness to always being the student, you know, like I try to like walk in like I don't know anything. Like, oh, teach me whatever, whatever we're doing. Let's teach. You know, just, I try to like I try to always act like a white belt, you know, because yeah. I feel like uh, the moment you don't, that's when you stop learning. Yeah. And, Things are going to start to go downhill. That older, that younger generation is going to start biting at you. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, so I've always tried to stay like a white belt in my mentality. Like if I'm going to, if I'm going with wrestlers and they want to give me some tidbit about wrestling, I'm going to take it. You know, if it, I'm a boxer, they want to talk about boxing, I'm going to take it. Like I, I'm, I try to really grab all that, you know, because I've never, I've never had like one, I've never got to go to like a Mark Munoz gym or anything like that you know mm -hmm. and so it's all i'm just trying to grab as much as i can from every little gym that i've ever gone to and evolve it and turn it into my game you know right and it there's a lot of like little crafty things that i think i do that people aren't expecting in certain situations and it's because it's worked it's because i got it from this guy out in the hills doing nothing mm -hmm. and just bled it into my style and, and made it work for me yeah. uh so yeah i'm 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 pretty confident and pretty happy in the position I'm in right now. So weight's doing good. The water's good. Like, yeah, I'm not feeling drained or anything. I feel, I feel good. So, yeah. Tell us about the, the build up to this fight and, and what's been going on in this training camp specifically. Like the shenanigans training camp? Or? Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about um, uh, what's a normal week look like for you first, <laughs> and then we can go into the okay. shenanigans. Uh, a normal week is usually at the gym at seven, uh, depending on what we're doing. I might do no gi first, or I might do uh, my own striking workout for an hour. And then some days, like Monday, Wednesday, it's 7 a.m. no gi, 8 a.m. MMA, and that usually goes until about 9, 9.30. And then I head over and do my North State CrossFit at 10. So that's Monday and Wednesday. Tuesday, Thursday, uh, I should show up at the gym at seven, maybe a little later. Sometimes I do my own workout, and then I teach the kickboxing class at eight. And I'll, you know, I'm doing drills. I'm, I can't just sit and not do anything. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in that class yeah. too. Uh, so we'll do that, and then we have no gi uh, on Tuesday, Thursdays at nine. So I'll do no gi at nine. So I'm getting three hours, three and a half hours every morning at least, right? Mm -hmm. and that's the main chunk of my training, just because I'm, I'm there. You know, I'm gonna stay there. Uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I also swim. So I'll go to YMCA and I'll swim a uh, half mile to a mile, depending on if I'm doing the half mile, I'm doing a lot of kettlebells. I'm doing a lot of other stuff within the water. Uh, if I'm doing a mile, I'm only doing a mile. That's all I'm just doing. Level, you know, level two, mm -hmm. uh, work the lungs, meditate. It's a lot of it. It's meditation for me. I'll just put my snorkel on and stay in the water for a half hour, right? Uh, so Tuesdays and Thursdays, I go to the pool. Mondays and Wednesdays after CrossFit, I'm I'm pretty dead, <laughs> so I'll I usually stay home for the rest of the day and I'll uh I got like a gym at my house I got speed bag heavy bag reflex bag like mats <laughs> the, whole, yeah. the whole nine yards so usually I'll stay home on Monday Wednesday uh do like a a light workout bag work just kind of rep my my uh movements more than anything the more the older I get into fighting the more I realize it's not about like killing yourself every workout it's about like like sharpening your tools you know it's just sharpening your body paying attention to every little movement when i throw this right hand what's everything else doing like how far is this elbow coming out how far is this distance this distance you know all, like am i firing from here am i lifting up and then firing it's all those little micro movements that i think when you get to like this level that's what's 
that's what someone's going to capitalize and that's the mistake that's going to cost you or, or like those little things right because at this point anyone i fight and i know like okay you throw a kick i'm gonna check it i return same side returns like all that kind of stuff like, i know all those little the basic level stuff right now what i'm looking for is slight impingements in your movement slight uh uh not kidding but uh habits that you have that i see you like drop your hand every time before you throw your left hook so when you drop that i know that left hook's coming so i know how to answer it like we're, i'm getting in the micro movement right. game you know so i try to really like take note of that when i'm when i'm doing my bag work and whenever i'm shadow boxing it's all visualization a lot of people will shadow box but only offensively mm. uh you gotta it's got to be back and forth right you got to pretend like you're fighting someone and so in fighting someone you're gonna have to be defensive at times but so yeah, that's usually Monday through Thursday. Uh, Friday we do the nogi at ten, and then I'll usually do a bag workout, and that's pr usually my Friday. Uh, it's just because it's a little lighter because those four days are so hard. And then Saturday uh, I'll go down to Chico and spar uh, with uh, standalone guys and like Kiba and all them down there. Uh, they have uh, Reed who fights. They have they have a couple good guys down there. And then uh, some, if I hit them up ahead of time, uh, they'll bring. There's another gym that will come and meet us there too. So we get a couple different gyms, a couple different looks, styles. Uh, so that's been real beneficial. And then um, some days throughout the week, uh, every once in a while, I'll hit up Strikehold, which is an MMA gym in Anderson, and I'll go cross spar with those guys like on a Wednesday or Thursday, depending on how good I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Uh, but again, it's like lighter stuff, just more, just getting your reps in, you know, just working on your movements, playing tag. Like I'm not big into sparring too hard. Yeah. Like I like hitting the body hard. That's cool. The legs are cool, but I don't think there's too much you get from getting hit in the head too hard for no mm -hmm. reason. So you need to understand how to work under pressure, but I can pressure somebody without hitting them hard. Right. You know, so I don't. You know, there's not a whole lot of need to get hit too hard in practice. So I like the, more of the Muay Thai, like we're going to tag each other, just tag, 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 mm -hmm. tag, and don't let me do the same thing to you, you know? Right. So, but yeah, so we, I train like at least three and a half to four hours every day. But on the counter of that, my nutrition is on point too. Like my wife helps me with everything, like all my cooking, all that kind of stuff. Like she's been a part of this for so long that she has it down yeah. to the science, you know, my when it's training camp, my kids know, like, we're changing the way we eat. And they'll, like, still – but my kid is obsessed with ices. So that's, like, his thing, right? Yeah. If, it's, if it's sunny out, he's like, Dad, it's hot. we got to get an icy. So every, anytime it's, like, any bit of warm out, he's getting an icy. So they'll still, like, sneak out and do that yeah. stuff on their own. But they'll just kind of, like, subtly, like, okay, we got to go to Walmart. Yeah. And then, I, they come back and my son lets it out and they had pizza. So. <laughs> but that's like, they should do that yeah, stuff, yeah. you know. I think I think it'd be miserable to have to eat what I eat all the time. Yeah. Especially when you're not cutting weight. I'd be like, what the? I ain't doing this. Give me <laughs> yeah. pizza. But uh, sure. no, so I got a real good family support too. Like like I said, my wife helps me with all my cooking. All like all the, the licensing and testing and stuff. Yeah. I'm not the one. No, yeah. I'm not going to be the one to sit and do all that. She She helps me with all that kind of stuff, so. Just big, big help, you know. Just super thankful for for them to be that like supportive of supportive of me, you know. So yeah, people don't realize all the logistics that going to being a fighter. It's a family affair. Yeah, and just all the paperwork and hoops and just politics. Like it's it takes a lot. Yeah, it, and, and then on top of that, you're doing the most brutal sport known to man in your underwear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It, yeah, it's 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 hard for me to like uh to like be in that fight mode but also have to like be a promoter of yourself too mm. like that's a hard act like because like <laughs> i want to go train in the woods and come out to fight and like go back to the woods and recluse you right. know yep. like, i want to like i'm that more of that kind of hermit mindset than like i'm not like a social butterfly really so it's hard for me to like play that a little bit, but that's just part of it, you know. That's yeah. you have to do it, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I'm get, I've gotten way better at it, I think, just getting out of my shell a bit and stuff like that, like doing stuff like this, uh, and just man, our gym just has a good vibe that like just makes you <laughs> for me, anyways. Just puts me in a better mood. Like every time mm -hmm. I go there, even if I'm not training, I'll stop in, just kind of yeah. get the vibe, and yeah. then go do what I got to do, you know. Yeah. So it. 
I think that just the gym atmosphere has helped me balance that a little bit because it's made me realize like I don't have to be fake. I just be myself, you know. And it, it doesn't take away. It adds, no, yeah. You know? And it, it, you know, training facilities and training, you know, um, groups can can sometimes really take away from you. Yeah. Um, whether it's, drain your energy. Yeah, whether it's negativity or distraction or or whatever it is, you know it's really important to have that. And like you said, we have a great, great crew at, at rice bros. So it's makes it fun, makes it enjoyable to, to go check in every day. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's our work. This is, you know, what we do for a profession. So we're clocking in, you yeah. know, and it makes it fun to have coworkers that can be lighthearted. And- I know. I almost, <laughs> I almost feel myself at times, like uh, having to like to shut up a little bit to train. Because, like, <laughs> yeah. We're having a good time. <laughs> yeah, everybody's like, <laughs> I know the other persons that I'm talking to is thinking that same thing too, but it you're just chilling, just talking. Like it's just, I don't know. It, you, you need to train. It's not like we're slacking because we don't want to train. It's just, we're chit chatting, you yeah. know, it's just, but I, I, I have caught myself. Like, okay, <laughs> shut up. I'll talk to you when I'm done yeah. <laughs> and train, you know, but I mean, we have such a good group there. And even like when we get new people, like, it's almost like they, a new guy will come in and like kind of read the room. But, oh, so this is the vibe. And just kind of like, mold to that you yeah. know and it's just keep it chill yeah. we hardly ever have like you i hear those stories and like you see them on facebook and instagram but like that never happens at our gym we hardly ever get a guy coming in there like all hot-headed you know yeah, no we don't have many bad yeah apples. yeah it's hard it's hard when um our enforcers are 200 pound black belts <laughs> will kick your butt with yeah. one arm behind their back so. whether well, 200 like it's not like a fat 200 they're no, like dead lifting yeah. 500 pounds 200 like walking around like this yeah. like most, most people don't spout off or no. brothers. So. yeah yeah <laughs> that makes it nice yeah except us when they're not around mm-hmm. <laughs> no they're great guys like tanner too like I, i've known tanner because like i lived in red bluff he's always been in redding we've always like or I'll bump into him at a fight and stuff. I never like until I started training in Reading. Even in Red Bluff, I didn't know him too much, right? Because he's in Reading. But when I started training in Reading, we started to become friends and stuff. And he's, he's a pretty fun dude. I thought he was way more like serious and and everything. And he he can laugh too. He can have yeah. a good time. He's a he's a good guy, for sure. So it's it's cool to to see that aspect of him, you know. Because mm-hmm. I only ever saw him as like the bad jujitsu guy that's like just straight face always like ready to like grapple somebody yeah. and stuff and now that i know that he's a funny dude he's all into star wars <laughs> yeah it's yeah. awesome he's just a geek like yeah, this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, i'm a comic book geek like yeah that. you were telling me about your collection there yeah well originally it wasn't even mine it was my uncle's oh, and, really? and everything and i just inherited it because that's i awesome. was like the next in line and i didn't give it to my brothers <laughs> 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 i was at the buck stops here i'm keeping this I won't burden you with them. It's okay. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take care of these. <laughs> yeah. And so now I got, now they're, uh, not all of them, but some of them are my kids' bedtime stories. You know, That's I'll awesome. read a couple of them, the ones that aren't too. I didn't realize like how like, like gruesome some of those com- comics were, man. Like yeah. I got some of the old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ones and I'm reading them. I'm like, I can't read this to you, man. It's like, pick a different one. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a good time up there. I'm really excited for this new gym too. It's like it's supposed to open what, like mid mid June? Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be nice. Yeah, I can't wait. A mile from my house, I'll be. I know. In there. Yeah. Great. You were talking about getting an e bike to ride it to yeah. practice. I'm like, where do you live? And then yeah. it's literally like a, like a couple blocks from your house. I'm like, All right, well, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a after after practice dips in the river and yeah, then jump in the pool. And I keep talking about a hot tub. Oh, get a hot go. tub. It's yeah. a big old tax write off, man. Yeah, hot tub, <laughs> sauna. Mm-hmm. The whole nine. We could all go in on the sauna and everything. Yeah. It'd be nice. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Okay, Maintained. so let's let's go into the shenanigans of your, your fight camp. There's always something that goes wrong, always some kind of hiccup that we just kind of roll with the punches with. But you had a, a couple interesting uh it's almost like roles. if it doesn't, if something weird doesn't happen in, in training camp, like the fight, like it almost feels off. Like everything's gone too smooth. You're just yeah. like waiting for your tire to pop yeah. on the way to the, <laughs> the event, like something, right? Uh, so we just bought a house in Anderson, which is like 10 miles from Reading, right? So we're wearing the whole like Susie Homemaker stage where we're like every week and we want to do something to our house, you know? 
So uh, we were coming back from Lowe's one day, and we were on the freeway, and I'm I'm with my son and my wife, and this car behind us uh, starts getting crazy. Long story short, it follows us off the freeway, and from off the freeway to the end of this incident is all recorded, luckily, right? Mm-hmm. So this car's following us, gets in front of us, brakes checks us, uh, then pulls over, lets us go, gets behind us, is all yelling at us and everything. Uh, so I live on a cul-de-sac, right? So it's like, you know, there's only X amount of houses. Yeah. So I stopped my car, I'm like, well, I'm not going to my house right now. You're literally telling me you're gonna shoot my house up. So I'm not going to my house. Oh, we're not doing that. So uh, I tell my wife, like, hey, drive, get in the car and go drive to a public place. Go drive to the police station. Go drive to the gas, whatever, wherever you, you know. Like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do this with the kid in the car and all this mm-hmm. stuff. So I get out of the car, and the people in in the car, in the car that's following us, rams their car at me, almost hits me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my wife takes off and she gets away, you know. So she's gone, and the car is still following me now. So I'm. I'm standing on the sidewalk at this point. I get out of the road. I'm walking. I'm standing on the sidewalk. And I'm just walking down the street, and this car's just slowly five miles per hour following me. And in my mind, I'm like, it's like, this. I'm already thinking, like, there's no way that everyone's going to believe that I didn't start this, right? <laughs> so uh, this person's yelling at me, yelling at me, yelling at me. And it's a chick, uh, and she's telling me, I'm going to, we're going to shoot your house up. I'm calling my family, all this crazy stuff, right? Well, I'm like, well, like, oh, what, what am I going to do in that situation? My phone was dead. I had nothing. Like, I'm in shorts and the t-shirts as I am now. It's like, well, I, we're going to have to figure this out, I guess. I don't know. So, and I have all this on video, but uh, I'm slow walking away from her, away from the car that she's in. She's following me in her car. And all of a sudden, another car pulls up uh, and some dude hops out and he's playing his day, like has a gun, right? It's in it. You see it in his shirt and everything, hand on it. And he's... For some reason gets close enough to where i can hit him and so he's walking up and i'm like you hear it like me asking him politely please stop like and that's not like it's not wasn't always who i was right like i was trying to be super calm and he he got close enough to where we could uh make contact with each other and he goes to pull it and uh i, I just hit him uh i only hit him i think once or twice uh just enough to kind of like neutralize it right uh she jumped in and uh like she never got hit or, or anything like that the whole thing's on video but the dude ends up getting rocked pretty bad right and so he's like rocked everything drops and stuff and i felt like bad for him to the point where like i was handing him back his wallet like trying to talk to the dude like I just felt bad. Like I've, I've been that dude, like maybe not like that raw, raw, but like <laughs> read the room a little bit more, bro. But like, I, I get, I get it. Like you're not going to do that kind of stuff unless that, like you got some like real, like it's anger in you. Yeah. <laughs> you got real pain in you, bro. To like want to do that, to inflict that kind of pain on somebody uh, without really knowing what's going on. Like you gotta, you gotta have some pain on the inside of yourself. So I really like, I felt for that dude, you know, <laughs> And then, like, so that situation ends. I, I end up going home. They end up whatever end up with them. Uh, they they ended up calling the cops on me in that situation. So uh, the cops come to my house, explain to me, like, asking what's going on. Luckily, I had this all on video because my buddy from across the street was recording the whole thing. Mm. So my wife had called him because he had, he was staying at my house. He's like, "Hey, Cole's being followed by a car. <laughs> you probably want to get down there." So uh, as soon as he, as soon as I saw him, I'm like, hey, just start recording right away, because I like I, under, I've been in enough of these situations. Like the video is gonna talk over anything I say, yeah. she says, he says, you say. The video is gonna speak everything. So I just showed the cops those videos that he gave me, and they're like, oh, okay, man, <laughs> like pretty self defense, you know. Uh, so that was like a Saturday, right? So Sunday goes, uh, Monday goes. Tuesday, uh, my wife needs her, her nails done. So she get her, she's gotten her nails done in the same place every single week that we've lived in Anderson since we've lived in Anderson. So about five months, same place every week. Uh, so, we, so I drive, and so we're still not like kind of unsure what's going on. So I'm like, all right, I'll drive you there. Like I'll, I'll kind of, I'll get a sandwich because there's a sandwich shop, shop right next to it. You get your nails done, then we'll go do it what we're going to do the rest of our day. Cause I was like, she's a frail little thing. She can't mm, fight. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if someone wants to beat her up, she's going to have to run or pepper spray him or something. Yeah. You know? So she, she goes in the nail shop. I go to the sub 
and there's a couple shops in between. And long behold, guess who's working there is these people, right? And uh, luckily, again, like I'm right in front of Subarama with the camera on me and everything. I go in there, I order a sandwich. Uh, I go back into my car and I'm sitting on YouTube, watching YouTube, eating my French dip, right? Waiting for uh, my wife to get out. And I look over and I see these same people uh, staring at me from one of the shops, like outside in the door. I'm like, great. <laughs> I might as well finish my, might as well finish my French dip. So I just keep eating my sandwich and I lock my doors and just keep watching YouTube. Cause I, I figure if they're upset with me, they're going to come talk to me. Right. And they came and talked to me. <laughs> uh, they start like knocking on my window and stuff. And they're like right outside my window staring at me. And, uh, that's when I like I, I start recording because again like I'm, I've been through this I ain't no <laughs> dummy you ain't gonna charge me for nothing I didn't do uh, so I start recording on my phone again and uh, I open my door and I record and they ask me here in the video what's up uh, hey are you the dude from last week and I'm like oh yeah, yeah that was me and I swear they had this like planned right so uh, this guy died I guess he was a wrestler he uh, <laughs> yeah I love wrestlers but man. <laughs> uh, you should have can't he should have faked it first or, <laughs> or, or transitioned to a single leg or, or something. But uh Better he went speak. yeah, he went low. He should have kept wrestling. <laughs> he, he went low and she went high on me. And so she's a, a a fairly large girl, right? Uh he's like not the biggest guy, but he's decent, right? So he's got my legs and I'm against my car, still holding my phone, and she's like on top of the railing of my car, like trying to kick me, like in the back of the head. And I'm like looking at her as she's hitting me and I'm looking at the dude and I start like elbowing the dude and I'm looking at her like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, like I was embarrassed already. Like, I was embarrassed. <laughs> and I was like, dang, this is horrible. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I hit the dude a couple of times to where I can feel he's done. Like he's not trying to drive anymore. He, you know, he's, it's done. So I let him get up and she's still hitting me like in the middle of She's still like hitting me inside the head. And uh, I let him get up, and they like she kind of helps him up, and they start kind of like he kind of like starts hobbling back to to his place. Uh, they were on at, they were on the clock at this time, so they were working. That's I got crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I should say where they work. But <laughs> I'm worked, but I got. <laughs> yeah we're, i won't but uh so they ended up calling the cops on me again right and i knew this was gonna happen again right and at this time there's like a metro pcs there's a pizza place a sandwich place a nail place tobacco place all of them are outside watching this right yeah uh and i'm like get your cameras or i need your videos get your videos the cops are on their way we're gonna show them these videos i do nothing f these <laughs> and uh they were all of them were like yeah and they gave the cops their videos. That's awesome. And it, the cops are like, I, I like, like they were mad at me, not the cops, but the, the people were mad at me. And it was like, well, what are you mad at him for? Like, So so both times, both they times. called the cops yes. on themselves. Both times, they started the fight. And meanwhile, this lady's pregnant, has her kid in the car in the first <sighs> oh, fight, yeah. and she's pregnant. Like yeah, so that chick followed me with her three year old in the car. The whole like all the road rage and everything that was on video, all her breaking, stopping, going, like all this stuff is all. I had my three year old in the car too, but she also had hers driving like all crazy like that, and then followed me with like, what if I was crazy and like attacked her yeah. in the car or yeah, like, kid. yeah, yeah, what if I had a gun or or something, right? Uh, so yeah, they called the cops on me both times, and the first time. They pulled up and the dude had the gun still. Like, you didn't even hide it, bro. <laughs> like you didn't even try. But so yeah, I, uh, the second time I hurt my hand, my knuckle pretty good. Not like the bone or anything, uh -huh. but just like just cut it right. Like it's just a surface uh, injury, but it was pretty like deep little cut, and that that was lame. I couldn't punch anything for like two weeks. <laughs> so I got really good at kicks and jabs for and those elbows. two weeks yeah, and elbows <laughs> for those two weeks. But yeah, that was. Just kind of crazy, man. Like, even one of the cops was like, you know, I worked here for like 16 years. This is the second time I've ever responded to a call like this. I'm like, yeah, man, I, I don't know, bro. But uh, now, like, I now I'm on my P's and Q's with everything. Like, I just, I'll let everybody pass me. I'm driving in the slow lane. Like, whatever, guys. Like, I don't 
Just like get me to the fight. Yeah, just give me, let me get to the fight. Like you guys do whatever you want. I'm gonna turn All on my right. veggie tails and just chill, listen to music. I'm I'm good, man. You guys, whatever. But yeah, I mean, it, it was <laughs> it was like not super funny the first time, you know. Like them telling me they're gonna shoot my house. I'm yeah, it's like, good. Maybe because I got kids, right? Like I don't. That's just like a you don't want to deal with that with kids and everything. Mm. And uh, it's kind of weird, man, because like that's. I kind of think that's like a new generation thing where like before it was like family was always off limits. You know, whatever your issue is, your issue is. Yeah. But now it just seems like people don't care as much anymore. And it's scarier, right? Yeah. Like you got to really protect your family mm-hmm. and uh, be mindful of what you're doing, you know. For sure. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that that was that, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, so back to training camp. Yeah, like back to training left. camp. Yeah. Hitting our peak. Yeah. Um it's been a nice long slog. Um, but we're we're getting to the end. We're we're peaking right and everything's getting tuned up efficiently. Yeah. But yeah, it's been nice these last like uh those last couple of weeks just kinda like getting to the point where everything I can feel everything peaking too. Mm-hmm. I can feel like power shots hitting harder. I can feel everything coming together better. Uh and like usually, like I'd still be like trying to kill myself right now in camp, you know. So it's yeah. good to have like you, Tanner, all these kind of people are like, hey, it's okay to ease mm. ease up a little bit because it's. Yeah. And I feel, <laughs> yeah, and I feel it in the in you know if I take a lighter day, I feel it the next day like how much more power, energy, mm-hmm. uh, even my attitude is just better, you yeah. know. I think sometimes you get uh, worn down mentally, mm-hmm. and like even me, like I'll still like. I want everything to be perfect all the time. So when I don't get something, there is that little bit of like, what am I doing? Like, come on. But I I think you need that a little bit. You need that enough to motivate you, but not enough to like hinder you, Mm -hmm. you know? So I think having that balance is, is needed. So, and I think, I think I've like, you know, like I said, it's just wrote my pro, like all my things that I'm not good at down on a piece of paper and like, I really try to sit like, or even ask people like, how would you beat me if you had to fight me? Yeah. And like having them tell me, I would do this, this, and this. Okay, that's what I'm going to work on, you know? And so, yeah. But I think you like, for one, you got to be able to ask that question and and accept that answer without it like getting offended or mm-hmm. trying to be argumented. Well, I would just do this. No, you couldn't do that. No, if that's what you think that you should do, yeah. you could do why, I'm not mad, but why do you, oh, because you see this tendency in me? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'm going to work on that, right. you know? And we go back to our gym. It's it's having people that are understand why I'm asking that question and understand why I'm asking them to like back up their answer. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like I'm trying to be argumentative with you. I just need to know why you think that so I can work on those things. You right. know, and I <clears throat> I think like having people like Nick uh, is a good guy that I like. I like to do that too. Keep is another good guy. I like to do that too because uh, I don't see Keep all the time mm-hmm. either. So it, it's. Uh, I get, I feel like a little more honest of an answer, right? Yeah. Uh, sometimes when you get in with the same gym people, they know kind of what you're going to do. And so they're going to stay away from certain things as opposed to the guy that you only see every once in a while. They're not going to know it as much. Right. They're going to play a different game with you or maybe play into your game or mm-hmm. not play into your game. I, sometimes when you're like sparring people, they'll get real defensive because they know if, if they open up, you're going to hit them, right? right? So sometimes it, you know, sparring gets stagnant with the same people all the time i know your tendencies i know you you know mine you're not going to move this way even though i'm trying to get you to yeah. so it you know it turns into that but i think just being honest with uh with who you are is a big thing you know yeah. and i think that's where i get that confidence from is that i feel like i've earned uh confidence because i've worked i've literally looked at myself and at all these holes and not just in fighting but in life and everything and try to like elevate myself in every way you know mm-hmm. get cut out all the distractions <laughs> all the bull crap and everything that's unnecessary and really like think about well what really matters right like family and for me like fighting mm-hmm. right like so what else am i wasting my why am i wasting my time on a tv show on this gossip or this or that like well, uh, why do i care yeah. you know like i like motorcycles but i think that's kind of part of that i think is during training camp i find something to like get my mind off of fighting yeah. so it's like all obsess about learning about something or this or that right so i think it, you need a little something but for me it's just family and fighting you know and so 
whenever I'm doing something throughout the day, I try to like, is this going to help either one of those two things? If not, well, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. It's just not needed anymore. And what was like your catalyst moment when like, did you watch a UFC fight and just thought, Oh, I could do that. Or what, what was it where you decided that I want to be a fighter? I don't really remember to be honest. Like I don't, I, I can't remember a time I didn't think I was going to be a fighter. Uh-huh. I can't remember a time that I didn't see myself as a fighter. Uh, I think the first fight I was ever in that kind of like like solidified it. I was like literally like five years old. My aunt, so I have an aunt that's two years, two days older than me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was like my partner in crime all, all through growing up. Like everything, like me and uh, her name's Timmy, right? So Timmy and I were just, anything she didn't, she's a total tomboy, right? Yeah. Like would fight. <laughs> it was like rollerblade, like was was pretty pretty cool, right? Uh, so there was we lived or yeah we lived in Yamhill, uh, Carlton, which is like a little itty bitty town in Oregon, right? Like does it? I don't even know if it has a stoplight. It might have a stoplight, mm. but uh, so she got in, into it with these kids across the street, and I like marched over there thinking I was gonna defend her, and I punched the kid right in the stomach, and he started crying, and I was like, oh. I'm going to get in trouble. So I climbed up into the apple tree and I just stayed up there for hours. And my aunt who was first was on my side and now she's upset with me because I won't come down from the tree. (laughs) And like, she's going to get in trouble if I don't come down from the tree. She's like throwing apples at me, trying to get me out of this tree. But I know when I come down that my mom's going to be mad at me for punching that kid. So I'm no, I'll just take the apples. But that was the first fight that I can remember was uh, that. And ever since then, I've always like, I've always just loved it. I've, I think because uh, I think because like I grew up like poor, right? And I saw like, and I didn't grow up in like a super ritzy place or anything, but and I grew up in a small town, so thankfully there wasn't too much like uh, discrepancy between like pay, right? Between parents, like we were all kind of broke kids. Mm-hmm. But uh, I saw like when we would go to other places or go play basketball or do whatever at, to the, against these other schools, and even within like our own school, like like money right like i saw like these kids have these brand new shoes all this fancy stuff and everything or or whatever right and uh it was always like yeah but i can beat you up <laughs> like that's and i'm just being honest for yeah. me that that's what it was and i don't i mean i don't think i was a bully uh we would just set up fights in the backyard and stuff and like sure take fun. bets on yeah. them and yeah. stuff yeah we called it i had a big old sign in my yard i would put in the sign that's when everybody knew it said study hall uh, so a big old sign that everybody in sheridan knows exactly what i'm talking about too big old sign i think it was an old door that we just spray painted study hall with an arrow and that's when you knew the fights were going down in my backyard because my mom didn't get uh, off work till like five yeah so i had like two hours if i went to school that's if funny. i didn't i had all day <laughs> But we just have a sign stuff. Dude, I was like a promoter too. I had like a, a table that had Vaseline and gloves and <laughs> like I was I, I took so care. Bad. I took care of my yeah, fighters, okay? Yeah. They had water bottles, I had chairs around the perimeter for people to sit in. Like, it was a thing, bro. It was like a thing. Uh so I don't like think I ever picked on anybody or anything like that. But it was just, just like love fighting. I just loved I loved yeah. that it was equal. Like it didn't oh, matter. Yeah. yeah, it didn't matter where you were from or what you did, it fighting is the truth. If you're not, if you didn't put the time in to get good at it, you're not going to be good at it. You know, you have, you have those kids that, to a certain extent, they have natural ability, right? Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, hard work isn't going to be natural ability if natural ability doesn't work, right? That's Ooh. the old saying. Yeah. So for me, it always felt like no matter what, this was an even playing field. Like right. it didn't matter. Like I, it's heart versus heart, skill versus skill. Yeah. So to me, yeah. it was like oh, I'm equal with you, and it doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you I'm better because I, I've earned being better, right. and that. As a kid, I used to like run miles and miles. That was my thing. I'm just gonna run and outpace people. Even as a kid, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So I just, I just kept that forever and got smarter on how to get better at it. So, but yeah, I would say probably ever since I was five, Rob always thought I was gonna fight. I thought I was gonna be Batman for years. Dude. I re- <laughs> like in my mind, part of me still thinks. Uh, in, in my mind, I thought I was gonna be Batman. Like for real, I was gonna be Batman. Like ah, dude. That's a career path you can do. <laughs> like, it was pr- like, I really thought I was like, up until like probably like 12, bro. Like, I seriously thought I was going to be Batman. Like, I was going to fight crime. Like, that was my thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it, it, was, it was funny. <laughs> I didn't realize that was fake. You can't do that. You know, Batman's body would be destroyed by now. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
Lucius Fox must have some good armor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Lazarus pit, isn't it? <laughs> that's my that's the hot tub weapon. for me. Whenever I'm too sore, I'll crawl, get to the hot tub. Wake up in 20 minutes, yeah. rebirth, ready to go. <laughs> Loosened up. Ready, yeah. Ready yeah. Yeah, I'm big in the hot tub. Hot tub and pool, man. I'm, I can't tell people enough about that. The pool industry of America should be paying me. Uh, the, the amount of people that I've got to sign up for, for the pool. <laughs> yeah, you do a lot of workouts in the pool. Yeah, hot tub. yeah it feels good. Just And it, it doesn't – I'm not tired. I'm tired, but I'm not sore. So I'm mm, like – It recovers you. Yeah, I'm ready to go to bed, but I could get up and do it again the next mm -hmm. day. So it's it's a different kind of fatigue. So yeah, yeah it dumps that lactic acid yeah. out of your muscles. Yeah. All that science talk. <laughs> stuff, um who is the the fighter that you model after the most, you'd say? Ooh. Um I like Silva. Probably Anderson Silva. Mm -hmm. But with like hints of Wonder Boy and like Hints of Chris Lieben and hits a Salvador Sanchez boxer and mm -hmm. Ramon Deckers, but with little hints of those, but I would say base Anderson Silva. Uh, yeah. We have the same reach. We're like the same height. Uh, we look the same, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the the power is similar and then your um, your aggressiveness is is not not similar. I think that's yeah. more the Lieben thing mm -hmm. with, with your aggressive style. Because you really do have an aggressive, yeah. Um, I I always call it cat and the mouse game, mm -hmm. where you're you're pinning guys in in corners and and beating them up. I'm making you figure out a solution. You have to solve this problem. You better answer right. Mm -hmm. You know that's that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. That minimizes your your damage actually mm -hmm. by, by press, pressuring. You're you're not allowing them to to take a back step and get more power. You're, yeah. you're pinning them with short short punches and short arms where they're they're having to get you know defensive real fast it's hard to continuously fight off your back foot mm -hmm. i think you can get some clean counters off like your back foot if they're throwing a single or a double shot right but if if i'm throwing more than that it's it's hard to get a clean counter off that at that point because you need space to set up and everything yeah. and i i think it's too it's too hard to get enough power especially if i know kind of what you want or what side of what you like to throw mm -hmm. i'm just not gonna let you you're just not gonna throw those anymore right or you can you can time it and, yeah yeah you know make them almost I'll make you pay yeah, yeah i'll make you pay for throwing your favorite shot mm -hmm. or kick or shot shoot shot uh take down or whatever you know uh, it's the same with jujitsu i try to really like put people in a position to where like you want a b or c pick one mm -hmm. i'm okay with any of them right and, put them in that in those positions you know uh yeah and i think that you know alongside with your mentality of, of similar uh where you kind of blank out your mind uh, yeah. and kind of just take things as they come is really important um because it burns a lot less calories you're not stay calm you, yeah you're not stressed you're not stressing your body your muscles aren't tense so you're able to go longer further and and um accept things as they are yeah you and don't so, take things to heart right so if you're you know what a lot of people get in trouble with in jujitsu is or even wrestling hammer have, no nail yeah and, and also they have um a singular mindset of, of the technique they want to achieve mm, right it's yeah. like i want to hit a high crotch i want to mm, hit that high that's crotch. My move. get that leg get that leg get that leg yeah and they don't pay attention to the other side or they don't pay attention to the kimura yeah. or the darts or whatever yeah. it is you know um they don't see the other opportunities right and being open like like you talked about just kind of clearing your mind and, mm -hmm. and letting things come to you is so important um to be able to strike when when the timing is right and and be able to set things up more efficiently yeah well because fighting is not it's a dance right and so one person can lead the dance but that person is still dancing mm -hmm. i can't i can try to dictate you dictate what you do but uh, you may not do it for one. You might not, even, you might not. I'm so you're the correct answer might be for you to do this, but you may be so far in left field. You throw something way off and I have to be ready for that too. You know, so uh, I think, I think Bruce Lee said it like, be like water. Right. Mm -hmm. And just like, and how you're saying, accept it. Like a lot of, I feel like a lot of times like in sparring and even watching fights, you'll see somebody get hit and you'll see them like 
change. Like you'll see it affect them to where they're like, oh man, oh man, he hit me again. Like you'll start to see the doubt overtake them, the the lack of confidence. And I think by being like mentally clear and not being too hyped into your own stuff and not being hyped into theirs, it allows you like, we're still fighting. Yeah, you hit me. Yeah, good job. <laughs> but we're still fighting. This yeah. isn't done. It's not done till it's done. And I think that allows me to stay calm. Even in like the, uh, some of our sparring partners love to like get in the firefight, right? Mm-hmm. Even during that, like, it's just calm. Just calm. Okay, well, this is open now, or this is open. It, it's, that's real, real, has really helped me. Cause I used to fight like more angry, like, ah, I'm gonna get you. And that worked to an extent. But I think when you run into somebody that like has that same thing or like knows how to survive during that, uh, that, that burst that you're doing that almost that emotional push uh it's the same thing when you get too mad you're tired afterwards yeah. you know like if that initial little rah rah doesn't get get them you know it's almost like you're, you're shooting your load early you know you don't have anything left and now you now you're in trouble now you better have some heart and you better yeah. that heart better work your cardio you better get that second wind again yeah. so i just don't want to play those games uh so yeah you might like you might come out, you know, you hear announcers talk about, oh, that dude looks ready. And yeah, you might come out a little more intimidating, a little more ready, but this fight's not 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. This is 15 minutes, yeah. man. You, you going to keep that angry face for 15 <laughs> minutes? Probably not. Yeah, no. So I just don't see a point in doing it at all. And that's coming from a dude that used to like, you know, walk around with a mouthpiece in his pocket, <laughs> wearing a pink uh, beanie, He's just like looking for problems, right? Uh, which led me to getting hurt a lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I just think being a calm, especially in what we're doing uh, and the level of like athlete that we're dealing with, we're not dealing with somebody that doesn't know how to do anything, right? Mm-hmm. Like anyone we I fight is going to know, is going to know jujitsu, wrestling, kickboxing. They're going to know. What we're, so we're playing a game of micro movements. And I think the be- one of the best things you could do in that is be calm, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's why they train military people to be calm, not crazy mad like it's not it's just not the way that i don't think that's the way we should, we process things properly you know i think that's why kids learn in a calm environment i think that's just how it should be for fighting too i think we've uh through like wwe and and hollywood and all that kind of stuff we just kind of made it seem like it was supposed to be this crazy raw raw thing when really like masters of fighting aren't like that at all ever so right, yeah. <laughs> they're all very calm like some of the calmest people i know are some of the most dangerous, you know, like Elliot Kelly down there mm. in Sacramento. When he shakes your hand, it's just like a little, hi, how are you? But that Very dude will pick me. Yeah, yeah, that dude will pick me up and throw. I, I try to take that dude down. He's boom, like, just like, uh, like, <laughs> hip check, you. yeah, hip check me. Like, oh, I'm not going to try that again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> I'll try something else. You shoot on me now. Yeah, but the nicest guy. In the yeah, world. some of the nicest guys are like that, you know, and that, that like, as a kid, I thought, oh, the tough guys with tattoos and, and like all that kind of stuff, right? And now it's like I'm looking at your ears. <laughs> I'm looking at how, how calmly you present yourself and how at peace you are because, like, there's a, always a flip to that, you yeah. know? And I don't want to mess with the flip of that, you know? Right. So, And so I've tried to, like, mo- like, become that a little bit more myself, you know? Like, try to be a little calmer, try to be a little less upset and stuff, mm-hmm. like, all that kind of stuff you know, kind of things. Cause I, I was like the angry little kid where I always trying to fight everybody. So like for me, it's just, it's so much more refreshing in the last, like when I had my son, I really, really changed like who I was as a person. Right. I really like altered everything about like who I was. And that was a tough growing. That was mm-hmm. lost a lot of good friends, lost some people I thought were friends that weren't man it just ch- it just changed everything right yeah. but it I changed for the better like yeah. I don't, like even like you've heard like some of the older stories that when i used to come in the gyms and stuff like to try to fight everybody mm-hmm. and uh not be welcome back you know and now like i can go anywhere and ever like I, it, it's nice that other people can see the change that i've been working on yeah. you know it's nice to when i get those compliments and stuff like your dad the other day told me he's like you can see that you have the joy of the lord in you and that mm-hmm. was like one of the coolest things like <laughs> that anyone said to me in a while right i was like dang that's cool because i i feel like I, I didn't know that's what it was or whatever maybe it's not whatever but i feel like i have that in me like some sort of like like yeah. pep in my step you know that I, maybe i didn't always have or maybe i was just too clouded to see it or whatever but uh i definitely feel like i have that energy in me you know so 
Yeah, it's a good, yeah. good clean, yeah, awo- awoken feeling. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and yeah, this gym obviously cultivates that so, so well. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to ask you what what's your favorite MMA attribute to to train? Like wrestling, kickboxing. What is, what is it lately? Oh man. Um. <sighs> I don't know. I think I'm all. I'm always going to be a striker at heart because that's what I did first. So I got some a couple of fancy little tricks I do that are some of my favorite strikes. That uh, probably so probably striking. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you get to that that flow state easier with striking than grappling? Um, yeah. I don't know. It's pretty even. Like I feel pretty flowy. I think because I always practice that calmness. Yeah. I think I can flow with 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 either one. I still think that at times in striking, I'll I'll get to where like I I, I when we're hard sparring, when we do hard spar, I'll get to where I want to finish. Mm-hmm. And so I get out of that flow state. So, man, I would have to say jujitsu. I can probably flow more. I still get in that like killer kill killer be killed in, in striking yeah. at times. You know. Yeah. Uh, if I'm just being honest, so I'll probably say jujitsu, and, and it's like the fact of the high level of jujitsu we have. Like, I can tell when I roll with you, like we're doing a flow around. I can mm-hmm. tell when you're flowing. It's like, okay, so we're flowing. We're, it's not like we're not doing stuff, but we're just, it's a different. It's hard to explain, right? right. It's just a flow right. roll, right? And we have so many good jujitsu guys that I can tap into that. I think almost instantly yeah. with them to where you know Bryce is a monster and trying to pass that guy's guard for 15 minutes is, is not fun, but flowing with it and trying, okay, well that didn't work. Let's try this. Let's try this. Right. Let's try this. And just, okay, well that almost worked, but my knee was a little bit out of place there. Okay. So next I'm going to come back to it in three times and then I'm going to try to do it with my knee in the proper place. And that kind of stuff is, I think the best way to learn to, yeah. uh, for striking or, or jujitsu. Yeah. So with your striking, you're more, um, get to that intensity level where you can just kind of put it on someone. Whereas yeah. jujitsu, you feel like you can kind of play with it a little bit yeah. more to open up things. Yeah. And I think that's the sport of striking too, is uh, when you, when you try to finish somebody in striking, it's usually more violent than mm-hmm. jujitsu, right? Uh, Cause you're hurting them. Right. And jujitsu, you can tap before it hurts. Right. So I just think the at the nature of the beast and striking it brings out a little bit more of the competitiveness, a little more of that aggressiveness, you know. Because uh, I'm big, I like body shots too. When I can see you starting to get tired, mm. I'll start playing and start hitting that body. But uh, yeah, it it depends. If I if, <laughs> I can flow with striking too, uh, but I find myself doing more of of uh, just putting it on you because in flowing it's a give and take more. Uh, in stand up, I'm not. I, I don't want to get hit ever, so I'm not gonna give you anything. Right. You know, I might not, I'm not gonna hit you hard, but I'm not gonna give you a shot it's just to give you one. Right. And your your striking style is so overwhelming, like we talked about. Yeah. It's like it's hard for people to even reciprocate. Yeah. And, yeah. Like a lot of times, I'll I'll get people just kind of stand in there, like just like I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I I think it's just because I've always love striking it'll always kind of be what i i want to do mm-hmm. but so, so like i said i used to not even do jujitsu right and i i just like people i think people forget that i started striking because i've been doing so much jujitsu lately right, and right. you're a brown belt yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm a brown belt now and that was like from like okay every day twice a day i'm in jujitsu yeah. class i'm gonna go for an hour a day at my house and figure out gi like i'm gonna learn gi i'm right. not getting tapped out anymore right. gi yeah. Uh, and so that went pretty quick from like a from a white belt to a brown belt, uh, but I think because of that and because I'm out of Rice Bros Jiu Jitsu, right? It's not a MMA gym, it's not a striking gym, uh, and we're known not that we don't have good striking. It's just our Jiu Jitsu is so head and shoulders above everybody that right. I think it's easy to be oh yeah, but their striking probably sucks. <laughs> it's kind of easy for people to kind of like wave it off like yeah. that. But like I started with boxing clubs. I started with Olympic boxers. Like that's what I golden glove boxers. That's like where I started. So I think that's always gonna be my love, mm-hmm. right? But uh I'm just as fanatic about jujitsu. Like I like obviously like I do. I'm there all the time. Uh it just really made me understand like how 
far I was when that happened in that fight, right? It was really like, because he was a good, uh, I think, college wrestler and everything. He was like a purple belt at the time. Uh, I just didn't pay any respect. I was like, whatever. I'm going to knock and beat you up anyways. And for a while that, during that fight, I was. Up yeah. until he got that submission, I was winning that fight. Right. So, And that's what hurt the most was sitting there watching that and going like, dang, I was winning. And I just didn't – I didn't know not to put your arms there. Like, right. it was something yeah. so <laughs> – like now, like I like mundane, right? Like any blue belt knows not to do that. But I had no, I didn't know. You don't know what you don't right. know. And so that I really like started taking jujitsu serious. And now I feel so confident in my ground game. Like that's why I feel like it's going to be hard to beat me because I'm so like even on both of these levels. You right. know, it's, it's if you get in too close, I'm and I don't like what we're doing. I'm gonna take you down, right. you know. And if you get in too close, and I feel like I can hit you with a shot. I'm gonna hit you with a shot. So we start playing that. What am I gonna do, and what are you gonna do? Game. Right. We start playing that. I have more options, and you have answers. Mm. And I just need to pick. Oh, you only have X amount of answers. Okay, you can only go this far. I'm gonna live over here then. Make <laughs> you come over here. Yeah. So it. I just think people have kind of forgot that I'm a striker first. Right. Uh, and you know, I guess the last fight. That's all was really shown but i i know even like when people are looking at my looking to fight me and they're gonna say oh rice bros probably gonna be a jujitsu guy so i'm like yeah cool that's do great for me yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 oh cool man um i think that's that's about it. yeah um Sweet. so we got your fight coming May 27th. up 27 okay and that's in wheatland hard yep. rock casino a1 um, combat yep, ufc's fight pass um, be on the lookout for that. Um, we got hopefully some t-shirts coming soon. Yeah. Be on the lookout for those. What's your next thing? When's your next uh, grappling event? Or I think I'll probably do nationals yeah. in July. When... Okay. Um, in Vegas. I nice. think that's my next one. Um, so, yeah, that'll be fun. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'll jump on that one. Is it no gi? Uh, they have both, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I might not do right the gi yet. Yeah, <laughs> well, dang collar chokes, man! I know. Trying to put pressure on people and they just collar choke you. It's like, not fun. It's yeah. not fair. <laughs> choke me with my own collar. Yeah, this, this ain't cool, man. <laughs> Especially those strong, strong guys. Oh, dude, yeah. I'll be like passing guard or passing into half guard, sliding, knee sliding, and all of a sudden I feel that arm creep up. <laughs> like, all right, we're we're we'll stopping here now. Right, we're gonna we deal with this. Hands. Yeah. <laughs> So it turns it's into that. Ripping fingers. <laughs> but I think that's why gi is good, though, because it makes you be more technical. Yeah. It makes you mindful of uh, everything a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, May 27th, A1, Hard Rock, 170 welterweight. So, weight cut's going good. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yes, uh, sir. And then June, about June 15th, look out for a new, new gym. New gym, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be cool. New training camp in that gym. That's going to be sick. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, thanks, bro. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, that's a story your dad's got to tell. Well, it's, they, it's they had a thing going like they played Pac Man and kept score with a crutch with a boxing glove taped to it. And they kept score. Danny was pedestrians. The there were different higher scores, like a guy on a bike. Was... Guy on skates was worth a lot, too. <laughs> What was the point system? Do you remember? Uh, well, it, it all depends if you meet a guy. And, and it was – points were by – it was a judge system because <laughs> you had guys, other guys in your car like, oh, that's two point, you know, because you made them, you made them stumble, you know. <laughs> so this was different intertwining. Like I would come home from college. They go, let's play Pac-Man. I go, what are you – stupid video game? I'm not playing a video game. They go, no, it's you don't different. understand. <laughs> it's different. And that, that all started one no. night. They got pulled over one time, but caught. Remember that? And oh, because we were shooting the BB yeah. guns on the floor. And he, John he, Jill had it, <laughs> and uh, we're just out shooting. These guns were powerless. I mean, yeah. So yeah, let's before we we'd all go to jail. Well, we should have. Uh, Are you filming? Yeah. <laughs> Always filming. What was that? He'll edit. <laughs>